The night went on forever. When the sun came up, the curtain was pulled back and he was restless and burning. They were awake with him. They, his audience, and he theirs. And though his consciousness was free of self and unabashed, as were the great actors, the Lily Taylors and Jack Nicholsons of the world, in return, he was captive to a deep retreat into himself where the pain lay in the dark for him. He paced and tried to breathe and made his declaration, I'm leaving. Mephistopheles wore a cotton long john shirt and pajama bottoms with bright red socks and Samba's three white slashes across black inseams. Circled him on a green bicycle while he walked home. What will you do, Mephistopheles asked. I'm going home to stare at a different ceiling. I'm bored with yours. Maybe we'll see you tonight, Will? Don't count on it. I don't have a wife I can freeload off. I have to work. We'll see you soon enough, eh? You circle me like a buzzard. Enough. Away. Fuck you, too. The devil's voice trailed as he rode away. Fuck you very much. Chapter 11 When his sweat made his fingers slip off the pen and drip from his hair to watermark the paper, Will often took the mile walk to visit Cass in her air-conditioned bedroom. Flagged down the Puerto Rican who pushed the paleteria and bought her a mango. He first made her acquaintance at the bar where she had been a cocktail waitress. She had barked at him each time she walked past with her arm under a platter holding drinks. Barked like a dog. Showed her teeth with her neck strained forward. He was flattered and showed her some teeth. They struck up some small talk. He wanted her to seduce him with real music. The DJ was playing crap. A no-character sellout Saturday night at a recently discovered bar. The place had to make bread to stay alive. She worked some dope beats out of the DJ per Will's request. She liked him. That night, he gave her a matchbook to scratch her number on. Unfortunately, the matchbook had numbers on it already. Numbers and girls' names. Friends, not lovers. Numbers he had copied out of his address book earlier that night. Cass penned 666 and then inked it out. And the number she wrote below it would be busy when she, when he called. He was persistent. He went back to the bar one night, sat on a stool, and rubbed the 14-karat gold chain around his neck. He didn't wear gold, but a guy in the street had got him to talk down to six bucks, and he took the chain. A gold chain made of silver. Maybe I should give it to someone who likes gold, he thought, then say goodbye to both of them 